Hello everybody, Steve Beecham here. Welcome to another installment of an interview with a local rock star. So today I have my buddy Mark Bulow with me and as far as I'm concerned, Mark's the rock star when it comes to especially major remodeling stuff. So we have a lot of people that are in our town that are doing a lot of remodeling. We've got people buying homes and you know around Roswell and Alpharetta and they're redoing them. We've got some folks doing that down in Buckhead and Sandy Springs. We have a lot of young millennials that are thinking about buying a house and trying to decide what they should and shouldn't do on, when it comes to remodeling. So I wanted Mark to come in and talk to me about it. He's qualified. He's a past president of NARI, which is the National Association of Remodeling something. And uh, he's been in Atlanta uh, chapter president, so he knows a lot of people in the industry, knows a lot about the industry, so thank you, Mark, for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So, my first question is, is um, you know, when somebody calls you and they're thinking about remodeling, what's the first couple of things that they, that they think that they need to do? What do, they, what do they start talking about at the beginning? Well, so most people, you know, the renovations involve kitchens, baths, those are the primary uh, areas that folks are looking to update a house. I mean, if you walk into a bedroom, it doesn't necessarily look like it's outdated. If it was built in 1950 or 60, I mean, the sizes are the same. But the kitchen and the bathroom, that's what dates the house. So that's really that's what, what they want. see. That's what they want to see, and they want to they update with the latest trends and styles and that sort of thing. So, so that so almost all the stuff that you do, they you redo the bathrooms and the kitchen. Right, like the project we're standing here on today, this is a whole house renovation, they added a porch and did some other things. But the you know, the primary driver fundamentally was the kitchen and all the bathrooms are updated, so the whole main floor, you know, is brought up from nineteen eighty up to the current standard. So So how many people are actually just tearing out the whole kitchen and putting everything brand new versus maybe trying to save stuff that's in the kitchen? Well for us in our business that's typically what we do. So the, the newer cabinets have better slides and pull outs and uh, you know the, just the way they lay out the kitchen is much more efficient than what it was done in 1980 or 60 or whatever so I generally go that path. Some people do with a new one, with all new, just tear it out. Appliances, you know, appliances, all new as well. So, uh, some people do a reface or a repaint or whatever. We do that occasionally, but most of it's full tear out and redo. So, if they're if they're doing the reface or whatever, they're probably maybe doing some of it themselves and that kind of stuff. So it's a lower, well, it's a either, lower it's cost. A, it's, thing. E it's a lower cost thing and maybe a budgeting thing. The kitchen may be not that old. It's stained cabinets, so they want the painted finish. So. You know, some of that works if the mm -hmm. layout and whatnot works, but even in those ca cases, we're tearing out the island and giving them a bigger island, all one level, enough for seating for three or four or whatever it is. You know what I mean? So that's that's what we're they're going. So at. the average person that's doing a pretty extensive remodel, what are they spending on a new kitchen? Well, I mean, appliance budgets can range from five, six, seven, eight thousand up to twenty-five or thirty thousand. So that's a big. Uh, differentiated there, plus the size and how much things are moving. So, a kitchen can go from 50 to 60 up to 150. I mean, it's, there's a wide range depending on what they're doing. And so, then you get in that discussion with the customer as to, you know, hey, what kind of countertops or, or what grade of cabinetry and all that. How does that usually work with the customer with them to decide what? grade point they want. In other words, is, is how long they're going to live in the house play into it or what are the, some of the things that make them spend a hundred thousand instead of fifty thousand? Well certain clients come with certain expectations as for whether it's inset cabinets, full overlay, some of those details and so depending on what those specifications are then we're going to drive them to either a full-on custom or a semi-custom line but within either, either one of those lines you can migrate both directions as far as cost goes. So really once you get down to the details and they figure out what they want then that kind of sets the, the price on the cabinetry component anyways. Okay, so now about the bathrooms. Tell me about the bathrooms. What, what are people usually doing in a bathroom? Are they... Well, so two, two things. Number one, the master bathroom, you know, bigger shower, Maybe the tub if they got space, the standalone tub, you know, better storage, all, you know, new tile, that whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, one main trend that I'm seeing, particularly in these secondary bathrooms is, and the realtors may not agree necessarily, but literally in 80% of these ha secondary bathrooms, we're tearing out the tubs and putting in showers. Because, you know, nobody's got, they're only infants for so long, right? right? And the kids need a shower, so 
I mean, that is over it the makes last, sense to yeah, me. Over the last five, six years, it's all showers in these secondary bathrooms. But are people still having a tub somewhere else in the house? Maybe in the master I mean, or something? It, it ranges. I mean, I've got these million dollar plus tap houses, and they do not have a tub in the in the in the house except for the master bathroom. So it just it all depends on what their priorities are. So what about basement stuff? So who's doing a basement? How do you decide to do a basement? When do you do a basement? What grade of level of quality finish do you do a basement? Well, I mean, either people are going to go to create their own unique space within a basement, whether it's an Irish pub or something real cool like uh -huh. that, man cave, or they're just going to go to match the main floor, which is a little more conservative route, but so it just depends. Most of the basements we do are completely unfinished. Sometimes we're refurbishing, you know, getting rid of the drop ceiling and making all those changes. But um, again, it's just personal preference and seeing. How do what you tell somebody about what a basement redo is going to cost? Well, I mean, there's the price per square foot again can range. I mean, it can right. be forty, fifty dollars a square foot. It can go up to a hundred. I mean, it's just, you know, if you're spending fifty thousand dollars on a bar, you know, it's going to raise the price per square foot. Average basement, somebody finishing out just average stuff. Another where the people spending a roughly around 50k, maybe 75k for a base. Well, I mean, some of these basements are big, so I mean, it's okay. usually in that 50 to 65 range. Okay. That's HVAC, drywall, you know, framing changes, bathroom, the whole program. So 200k gets your basement finished, gets you a new kitchen and some new bathrooms, right? That's right. That's and you right. really haven't done anything else. That's right. All right. So then, what are you what are you seeing as far as what people want to do with the exterior of their house? Are they changing the exterior that much? Are they adding porches or taking porches off? What are they doing? Well, front porches are real, real popular. I mean, they're looking to do kind of like we did here, is just create a traditional front porch. Um, there's portico um, ideas because they want to keep some shit weather off the front door. Um, and then there's there's other clients, which we don't do a lot of it, but the window and the replace all the siding with hardy and that sort of thing. Okay, so. What are some of the things that you get in discussion with people about that you feel like you kind of need to educate them on that they're not normally thinking about? Well, budget's probably the first thing, right? Okay. So they all watch the TV shows, the HGTV. And Is that stuff, those prices real? No, typically it's not. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's typically they're, they're much lower than the, the real life prices are. Um, so getting people to understand where their realistic budget range is going to be, I mean, I believe in setting a realistic expectation and then we can dial it down or whatever from yeah. there. But uh, most people don't come to the table with, they're with looking realistic. for a Cadillac, they, they come there with a Chevrolet or less budget, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so Mark, I want to ask you, you know, I run into this a lot in the mortgage business. Somebody's got a house for sale, you know, and a lot of times they're, they're, they're what I would call dated homes, you know, they're 20 years, 30, 40 years old, and they're trying to make the decision, do I do I do some updating or do I not do updating? How do you how would you counsel them on that? Well, I think from a uh, you have to have the home at least presentable enough where the paint's generally clean and new and that sort of thing. Um, I think you got to do those bare minimum type deals. Uh, if you go on to a full renovation like this, a major renovation, I don't think you're going to see the return on investment immediately that you need in order to, to, to do that sort of thing. So I would spruce it up, sell it, and then move on. Okay, so do you think if somebody had a house, like I've got some friends that have some like 60, 70 ranch houses, you know, one of the things is do I come in here and put $20,000 in the kitchen or whatever, or redo the, take out all this pink tile and stuff and redo all of that? Because I know that a lot of the millennials are having a tough time because they don't have any extra cash to go do that after right. the sale. So, do you, where, how would you counsel somebody, yeah, if you went and did this, not only is it going to make the house look more presentable, but you're also going to get your money back. So where are those areas? What, how would you do that? Well, I mean, the 1960s home, then you got to, you know, where is it geographically? Is it in a place where it's a potential teardown? So you've got some other factors that okay. go into it. So. Um, because somebody mean, might buy it and just bulldoze it. That's right. So you, you certainly don't want to put money into something that's got a potential to, to get torn down. Um, but if it's not a teardown, then, you know, maybe the bathrooms, you need to do some tile and some countertops and, you know, give it sort of the lipstick on a pig sort of thing. Get, yeah. Get it to the point where it looks like, wow, they did some things. You know, the stained cabinets are now painted. And those are good things to do. So can you paint stained cabinets? Yes, you can. How, how do you do that? Well, you, you, they would sand it and prime it and paint it, assuming it's, it's all real Take wood. Take the gloss off of it? That's right. That's right. 
I see, I see. I didn't know that. Okay. So if um, if you've got somebody that's potentially going to sell a house, and there's maybe going to be baby boomers that are going to buy that house, and they're going to do, you know, they're going to blow it up, and they're going to do some stuff. Would you spend the money on on sprucing it up so that it looks good to sell, or would you just not? Why spend that money at all? Do you think, well, how important do you think that? I mean, if you think you're in a market where you do have a baby boomer that's got money to put into it uh -huh. versus a millennial who does not. Like downtown Alpharetta or something, right. a lot of people are selling their houses in the, sub, you know, the big golf subdivisions and they're coming downtown. Right. So, I mean, those, I think, uh, first of all, a lot, of, a lot of buyers are just attracted to the big house. Yeah. Right. So it's got a big kitchen, even it's a little bit out of date. They don't really know the difference, right? So okay. you've got to be careful how far you go if you have a pretty good footprint. Then it comes back to that, let's just do the paint, let's do some sprucing up, maybe it's countertops. You know, so paint's locate. probably a good thing to spend the money on regardless of what yes. you think might happen. You can at least make it look fresh. Yes. Paint is probably a minimal uh, thing okay. to do. What about landscaping? Well, I mean, it, it all depends on where it's at. I mean, if it's horrible, then yeah, you're gonna have to do something. Uh, if it's in pretty good shape, then get it cleaned up and let it go. Let it go. Yep. Okay. Then what about um, when somebody's thinking about doing that, and you're saying that one of the issues is they really need to get realistic about their budget? How do you do that with people? What's the best way to do that? Well, I think most people have to go through the process. They have to talk to a few people. And just what's you know what what are they hearing? It's like when you go buy a car and you, the Cadillac costs you X, and they're like, oh, okay, well then I need to either adjust my expectations on the scope and go down to a Chevrolet, or whatever. Most people just don't have any idea. So it's that initial piece of what's what am I what am I going to spend here? I got no idea. Do you sit down with them and kind of go through that? We do, and and you know I'll tell I'll do an initial proposal that kind of outlines what they're high level goals are and then they'll, they'll either say okay that works or they'll pare it down and you know look for an alternative along those lines. So kind of much like a real estate agent would sit down with somebody and say how many bedrooms and baths do you want try to get the parameters you would do the same thing That's you right. sit down we'll kind of get the parameters then come back and give them a cost and then you can just up or down from right there. right because okay. I find most people go through that there's phases of you know the buying decision if you will if you're a remodeling customer it's step one is the wow factor, what's the budget need to be, and then you, they move into number two, that's where they're, they, they've accepted the budget and now they're just trying to figure out who they want to work with. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So that's, that's how that process So works. where are you getting most of your work in North Atlanta? Where do you see the, the, where people are really redoing, doing extensive remodeling work on their homes? What, do you, what parts of town? Well, my office is in Roswell, so I try to keep a circumference around that uh, office or that location, you know, the closer the better. So we do a lot in Roswell, Alpharetta, Milton, East Cobb, Dunwoody, Sandy Springs, Buckhead. So is it thing. the 70s golf course communities or is it the stuff around Canton Street and downtown, the 60s ranches? What do you? What? Yeah, most of them are in neighborhoods, standalone type spaces. Th those are the types of homes we're, we're working on. I mean, obviously the markets are all different. Alpharetta has a different stock of home. Roswell has a different stock of home. You get down into Sandy Springs and Dunwoody, those houses are older. So, you know, it's really just each market's a little bit different. Even downtown Atlanta is totally different than, so it just, just all depends on where they're at. Okay. And then if somebody wants to do a project on their own, how do they go find subcontractors? How would you? Well, would I mean, you tell? yeah, our model is it's a guided tour. So they come to us, and we we do the design, coordinate all the details. Uh, we do the construction, permitting. So it's real, all they have to do with us is help us help them make decisions, if you will, right? And then option two, which we don't do at all, is you know clients are working hiring their own subs, which can be a hugely laborious project. You got to meet with two or three plumbers. You got to meet with two or three electricians. I mean, if you have endless time on your hands and you don't want professional guidance that works too but I mean that's all there's all kinds and it works for everybody so you just got to figure out which way you want to go okay so Mark when you if I if somebody comes into your office and they want to see some of that stuff how it looks what do you do to show them that visually how do you do that well, my clients, they go into a design and planning phase, and that's where we engage um, outside architects and resources to, to create, a, a, a big picture plan, 
which there'll be electronic renderings and this sort of thing, floor plans. And then after that, then once we have the floor plan set, then we get into detail. So it's tile design, it's cabinet design, it's you know looking at cabinet styles, countertops, and the designers help them coordinate all that stuff. So, so they have like a 3D thing, like you know you see on television. They're like, you know, this is what it looks like now. We're going to put this here and do that there. Do you, can they see that at your place? Will they be able to see that kind of stuff? Well, we we create those types of images, but it's electronic, so it's it's visual on the computer. So it's, oh, okay. Uh, you know, whether it be color or black and white, black and white or yeah. whatever. So so you can get a feel for it. That's right. That's right. Okay. I mean, they really have to see it. They've got to understand, and the, it's a part of the approval process. Is you know, the bedroom's this big, the bathroom's this big, the shower's this big. So you know, we really got to make sure that we stress those details and understand what they're getting before we build it. Right. I want to thank uh, Mark Bulow with Distinctive Remodeling. He's located in Roswell. Thanks for being here today with us, Mark. If you ever need a good remodeling contractor, he's the guy that I use. I hope you give him a call. Thank you for being with us for another section of uh, interview with local rock stars.